So today I'm going to be trying to find out what effect a muzzle brake has on rifle accuracy. In a previous video, I established a baseline by uh, firing a series of groups, the average size of which was 1.59 inches at 100 yards. Uh, and I'm going to take now that same exact gun, same ammo, uh, same parametric conditions and temperature and outside and whatnot, roughly, uh, and shoot another series of groups with a muzzle brake and see what happens to the, uh, the group sizes. Uh, certainly 1.59 inches at 100 yards is nothing to write home about, uh, but A, I'm not a particularly amazing shot, and B, I intentionally chose a low-end ammo so that variances in um, accuracy be easier to detect. Um, anyway, the muzzle brake is a WIT machine, W-I-T-T -T machine, uh, clamp-on muzzle brake, you can Google them. Um, I'm not getting paid by them or anything. Uh, I just figured if you wanted to know. Uh, although, Wit, if you're listening, I would be happy to take your money. Um, and, you know, just a general note about muzzle brakes. They don't actually make the gun any more accurate. What a muzzle brake does is it redirects the recoil gases to the side and, and vertically instead of just straight out the front of the gun, which greatly reduces the perceived recoil, or theoretically does. I, I you know, this is the first time I've ever used a gun where I'm just shooting without a brake and then putting a brake on it. Anyway, theoretically reduces the perceived recoil, um, such that you're shooting less tense and with less of a flinch, maybe. Um, you know, and both of those things certainly help accuracy a lot. So um, I'm just gonna give you the group sizes. If you wanna get a sense for how it felt uh, comparatively on my shoulder, uh, skip to the end of the video and I'll mention that as well. Let's get started. So not a very good start here, uh, 1.61 inches, slightly larger than the average group size uh, from the control group. Anyway, let's keep on shooting and see what happens. So the second group was 0.93 inches in diameter um, and represents a smaller group than anything I was able to get with the just uh, unmodified Tika. Let's get some more groups on paper and see what happens. And for the third group, 1.47 inches in diameter. Um, back to, you know, closer to what I was getting with the um, control groups, although, you know, still slightly under. And for our fourth group, we have a 1.26 inch diameter. And yes, the guy behind me was wearing nothing but a t-shirt in January in Pennsylvania. What can I say? He's a Marine. And there you have it. I got an average group size of 1.32 inches with the muzzle brake, as you saw in this video, compared to an average group size of 1.59 inches uh, in my previous uh, control group video. Um, indicating a 17% decrease in group size thanks to the muzzle brake. You know, when you actually look at the numbers, the amount that the group decreased by really only represents about half of the standard deviation. So, you know, it is possible that it was just statistical variance um, that led to the smaller groups this time around, but I don't think it was. I absolutely believe that the muzzle brake led to this increased accuracy because I felt so much more comfortable while I was shooting the gun. Um, you know, I guess this is where we get into the review section of the video, but uh, call me a pussy, 300 wind mag, 338 wind mag, uh, you know, the larger recoiling, uh, you know, heavy caliber guns. Um, I will often flinch while I'm shooting them. Um, I tend to hold them, you know, in a bit of a death grip. Um, with the muzzle brake on, I was able to just let the bag support the gun. I had a good cheek weld, obviously. Things were firm, but I was relaxed. Um, I know I had zero flinch. Um, I was very, very impressed with the muzzle brake um, and uh, will absolutely be adding it to other, you know, larger caliber guns that I own. Um, and I, I think it did in turn make me more accurate. So anyway, very pleased with it um, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. I'm going to continue to upgrade this gun um, while always removing previous upgrades so that, you know, I can test the upgrades I'm adding against the baseline test um, that I already uh, cited a couple times in this video. Um, so I hope you enjoyed and thank you very much for watching.